everyone was kind of gassing me up, but then, do you know what it is? You get coaches that will be like, oh man, you're great, man, you're amazing. And then, but, you know, it, I kept hearing it a lot. And then, uh, when I started sparring, I would hit someone, I would see the change in the look in their eyes. And I started thinking, I think I've got something here. I said, oh, you know, I want to I train, I want to fight, I want to know what it feels like, all that kind of stuff. And then the, the snowball, do you know what I mean? You start going from there. Stephen Adentan is a bit of an unlikely boxing pro. At 29, he's a latecomer to the sport, having spent years working as a model. In fact, he didn't even intend to become a pro at all. When I took it seriously, I, I guess when I went to Repton, but um, before that, it was more like a community kind of gym and like go there, it's like take kids off the street and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but, you know, everyone was like quite impressed with my sort of ability to learn technique and then physique as well and all that kind of stuff. So then I was like, okay, well, can you box? And then I started doing a little bit of sparring there. And like, in hindsight, we were, we were all crap. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I started doing a little bit of sparring there. And um, yeah, it was just like, hey, I think this kid's got something 100%. Um, I was like, okay, let me run with it. Let me see what I can do with it. And I said, I think I need to go to more a more established gym where it's actually lots of amateur fighters and stuff like that. And then see where I'm at. The early stages of Stephen's career were characterised by success. Of 20 amateur boxing bouts, he won 16. He had sparred with Anthony Joshua. But during his first ever pro debut, he was knocked out in the second round by a single punch. A shocking and surprising defeat for a boxer with so much potential. Stephen, can you talk us through how you felt after the bout? Uh, yeah, I wasn't, I, wasn't in, I wasn't in any kind of mood to give any kind of excuses. Whether or whether may not there have been, doesn't matter. What happened, happened, do you know what I mean? We take ownership and then move forward, do you know what I mean? Um, and like, you know, physically, it was mentally, it was, it was important because physically I was okay. So I needed everybody to know that I was okay, not to worry about me. Uh, mentally, it helped massively me doing that. But, you know, don't get it twisted, like, you know, macho, man, provider, all that kind of stuff. I held my, I held my stuff together, you know, I was obviously annoyed. Yeah. Held my stuff together, went, left the ring, uh, went backstage. As soon as there was nobody around, just started streaming. Said, I, I, you know, I really felt like the whole world just saw, saw me fail emphatically. And that is the thing that really grounded me with this is that a lot of people fail. Everybody fell in, in certain things. Some people never put themselves out there at all. So they don't say it. So, you know, you can't fail if you don't try, right? But then some people try things and they fail, but nobody knows. Nobody sees. Maybe a couple of people might see. Maybe, you know, they, they don't get a job. You know, they fail. But this is, not only is this sport, right? This is an extremely, uh, extremely sort of, I can't, I don't know what word I'm looking for, but basically, if, if it was football, it would be like, you know, be letting an own goal. Yeah. Damn. But, okay, you know, it's still tough to take. If it was tennis, you know, you kind of messed up and played really bad, whatever. The thing with boxing and being hurt and knocked out and stuff like that is, mano y mano, if I've said that right, I'll probably correct that wrong. Mano a mano, um, you have somebody standing over you yeah. as they've knocked you down. And it's, ex it's an extremely emotional, um, pride affecting um, sport at the moment. And mental stability is the most important thing here. Custy Amato with uh, Tyson said, you know, boxing is, uh, I believe he said, boxing is 30% physical, 70% mental. But with Tyson, it's 90% mental. That's why I tell him every single day, you're going to be a champion. You're the youngest heavyweight world champion. You're amazing. You're this, you're that, you're that. Because you have to believe it. So when you do actually get a knockback, yeah. it's easier to get yourself up, dust yourself on and say, I actually understand what I'm capable of and what I can do. So all this outside noise, which is a lot of insecurity from other people, yeah. right? All this outside noise doesn't matter. You've got tunnel vision on how to get there. You were praised for returning to social media and doing interviews so quickly afterwards. What inspired you to face the world? Because I wasn't, you know, tucked up in a hole somewhere, not wanting to face the world. I said, let me face everyone head on right now. I'm here. 
it's happened. I can't believe it. I'm as shocked as you guys are. Do you know what I mean? But take it as it is. Go back to the gym and I need to work on a few things. Thank you for the support. And I think that done a lot for me as well as it did for everyone else. We've had loads of people coming up to me when they see me in person. Dude, the way you handled that was inspiring. It was amazing. It made me a fan of you even more. So on and so forth. And I, that's not what I was aiming at. I was just like... I just didn't want 100 million questions getting sent to my phone. <laughs> I'm okay, uh, yeah, don't message me. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it happened anyway. But... And now, looking to the future, you say you're planning to continue to box professionally. How do you stay confident and keep your head up? If you're not, if you're not sort of confident in your own ability, half of that was lost. Right? So I have to be super confident and do what I need to do in training to make myself more confident. So not cut, not, uh, not cut corners, listen, improve like a school, do you know what I mean? Right, I've got a lesson, I write down notes, uh, I do my homework, I come back, I improve my learning. And it's a process, and again, shut out, the main thing for me is shutting out all the noise. It doesn't matter. What matters is the improvement of your own ability in the sport, and your own performance, and the sport itself. Fans come and go, brand, partnerships, sponsorship, all that kind of stuff comes and goes. My mum always told me, um, what did she tell me? <laughs> My mum always told me success has many friends, you know what I mean? Failure has none. And that, that was, I learned that, unfortunately, the hard way. This is the reality of the game. It's not something you can hate. It's just that you have to focus on the sport. People will come, fans will come, sponsors will come. And if you don't win, they'll go. Yeah. It is what it is, you know what I mean? So what is, will stay the same, will stay constant, 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 is your ability to improve and win. Simple as that.